is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the Gramercy Theater, and today we are here with Otto. It is great to be able to talk with all of you. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, thank you, Alex. Yeah, thank it's you. So awesome me. to have you guys here. The new album, Life Is a Game, is absolutely kick ass. I wanted to know what the sort of thought process was behind the making of this album. Was there sort of like a vision that you all had in mind into it, or was it like a very like improvisational songwriting process? Man, um, the record started before COVID, and I think going into it early on, it was just kind of like a general batch of songs that we had worked up, and we were getting ready to record. But then after the shutdown, we really were able to take some time and work out the songs and kind of, you know, put like a put like a really good batch of songs together and take our time on them. Um, and I think there's not really like a whole general like you know main. Like I would say, vision about it. But yeah, it's still yeah. not like a full like concept style record, but but there's certain things here and there, like certain lyrics here and there. I'm sure like you know you've written like you know about some experiences on lyrics. Right. Uh, in terms of songs, though, I think it was really improvised. I mean, we took an inspiration from our surroundings, like where we were, you know, the nature and all that stuff. But yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, th so a lot of the uh, so with using the surroundings, I'm glad you mentioned yeah, that too yeah, yeah. because like it, uh, there was a lot of external sources of inspiration. But was there any of looking inward with it? You know the famous saying, uh, "Every painting is a self-portrait." So was there some looking inward with the making of it too? Oh uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, definitely during COVID, I feel like a lot of people, you know, started thinking a whole bunch more than they used to, and they had a lot more quiet, free time to. Um, so I feel like uh, some of the songs, i.e., like Scopa. Um, you know, that's a song about just like kind of getting outside your head and battling like that, that inner voice that keeps saying no, or that inner voice that keeps saying you can't, um, and like realizing, you know, like we got to start living more in the heart, you know, get out of the head sometimes, think more in the heart. Yeah. Living for the moment to a degree. Is that where, where the meaning of the name came from? Life is a game because it is a game where that, that is sort of like the rule. Yeah. Yeah. Life is a game. That was, um. One of the first songs that we had, like, you know, one of the singles was uh, Skyscraper. And, you know, the lyric in there, knowing life is a game, we were like, okay, you know, I think that kind of summarizes the record in a general general aspect. Yeah. Well, I feel like every song has, like, its own emotional vibe behind it. Like, when I listen to a track like Skyscraper or, uh, or uh, My Pain or Ride Low, I feel mm -hmm. like Ride Low is a really good... Uh, you know, track as well. So, is it fair to say that many emotions were felt through the making of this? You mentioned it was you start working on it before COVID. A lot has changed between then and now. Yeah, for sure. I feel like when we were working on the record, it was like kind of like when when is this gonna get? Done? You know, it was like because it was like everything was kind of out of pause in the world. So we we're just like, I don't even know when this is gonna get done, but we're gonna take all the time we can get just to kind of work on this and take our time with this and not like rush it too much or you know be able to pour everything into it yeah. in terms of like uh, speaking on a technical level i know it's like a very cliche question to ask what are your inspirations but i see elements of punk and auto i see elements of rock i see elements of metal like you really go all along the spectrum a smorgasbord of heavy so for each and every individual one of you who are some of you like your main inspirations that kind of made you sort of like uh pick up like uh your instrument and how you sort of develop your technical proficiency from there all right yeah 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 i'll go so so for me so i i I'm, i play the drums and as probably of what you know a lot of drummers can say like the the big inspiration for especially a lot of rock and metal drummers goes back to john bonham um, of led zeppelin and just what he meant to the instrument and you know there's like a lot, a lot of people now that are like, you know, technically just insane, but they wouldn't be able to do what they did without him and what he was bringing to the table at that time. So I'd say John Bonham really influenced me in a lot of the ways I play, especially, especially with like the single bass playing. I, I like to do a lot of those like triplet kind of notes and faster single kicks that he would do. So I try to bring uh, a lot of Bonham into my playing as well as guys like, you know, chad smith and then you know when you get more progressive into some of the trippy sections of our songs there's like a dudes like danny carey that influenced me as well so I, I those are a pretty good three that come to my mind awesome 
and uh, as for you, because I mean, I see so much punk rock when I uh, see uh, photos and videos of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a um, lot of punk rock. I uh, really like uh, you know the Misfits, uh, the Ramones. They're big inspirations. Those are kind of the first bands I started listening that were more like rock oriented. Uh, and then uh, I'm also really like influenced by you know Suicidal, of course, Suicidal Tendencies. Fucking love them. Um, and then definitely Alice in Chains, you know, a little bit groovier, uh, a little bit more on the groovy side. And then, like, a lot of funk bands, you know, I like them. Yeah. So I, I see some funk attitude. Yeah. And as for you, a tie, because, you yeah. know, in the world of rock and roll, we've all heard our fair share of terrible bass player jokes and memes here and there. But yeah, it's yeah. such an important instrument and in having both an emphasis on rhythm and melody. And I, you know, have watched videos of you playing before, and there's a lot of energy and emotion you channel into it. Because, like, one minute I'm like, is this guy taking inspiration from like technical death metal or is he taking inspiration from like sting so i'm curious to like uh if you have like a specific model that you uh work off of as well well i mean i you know bands wise alice in chains a uh, big influence on a lot of our stuff like it's especially during the life is a game era it's just a lot of like the melodies and stuff and the riffs and stuff and then obviously i can't deny you know metallica definitely helped me pick up the instrument um you know, seeing my dad play with them and stuff. Um, and suicidal tendencies, um, you know, infectious grooves and different projects my dad has done, like Mass Mental was one underground project he did with uh, this badass bass player named Armand Sableco. Uh And it was just all bass and drums. Uh, Brooks Wackerman actually played drums on it at one point from Avenge. Oh, shout out but, to Brooks. Yeah, 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 Brooks is amazing. But Yeah, I just saw Avenge uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's he's, awesome. He's insane. Yeah. He's insane. I love his work with Bad Religion, too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I see some corn in your bass playing influences uh, as well. I don't know where I get that idea from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but um, when it comes to like you know the making of an album, you know when people tell me oh we all collectively yeah. came together and you know we all had yeah. a mutual understanding, I don't really believe it. You know it's in a band compromise of you know three to five individuals with all your unique experiences. So could all of you feeling different emotions or feeling different sources of inspiration maybe actually help enhance the sound too? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I think one thing about us is we all like variety. Um, in music and just in general and everything like whether that be like clothing or just personal interests but I think that you know our different like styles and things different things that motivate us definitely as a collection we could all work together and bring that to make our own sound but you know isolation is always such a great fuel for creativity but it is a band where there's camaraderie so do you all prefer to come up with ideas when you're more alone in your own element or is it better to be in the company of each other? You know, I really think like it's a little bit of both because a lot of the times when we're writing our music and whatnot, we'll come up with our ideas, you know, separately, but then we'll come together and then like usually, usually in my garage, that's where we like to rehearse or exposition studios. And it's a good spot in LA. Anyway, so then we'll come together and we'll present these ideas and kind of jam. And then from there, we'll really go on essentially like a, a, a creative wave that's like always changing you know we'll try this idea try this idea try that idea until we come up with something that we can all kind of collectively agree on like like this is where this song's going so this is this is how we're going to approach it so so it's a it's a combination of both individual and collective yeah it's very collaborative like if one of us comes up with an idea on our own we bring it to the table and then we'll like build off of each other and chip away at it together when we're rehearsing and stuff. So that's it's like it's like a little both together, yeah. Yeah. Um, do Do you find it though the longer you work on a song? Because if you're working on a song for days or weeks or months, if you're tool thirteen years, but like uh, if you're working on a song for a long period of time, does it make it a little bit more difficult to like maintain the initial spark of the idea? Like, do you almost kind of like have to finish? The, do you like to feel the same way when you finish a song as you do when you start it? It can definitely be like a little tedious sometimes when you're working on a song and you can't quite figure out where you want to go with it. So you're kind of like stuck with it. So then maybe you go on to a different project, like a different song, and that kind of gets your creativity flowing again. And then maybe you'll actually hear a recording of that previous song and you'll be like, I know what to do now with that song. Because like now you got your creative uh, juices and mind flowing with, you know, creating something new. So you, you can always, like, come back to that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
How do you know when a song is finished, though? Most typical question. I want all three of you to answer this, because I love uh, uh, messing with people with that question. Uh, man, uh, I think when the song's finished, I feel like when we all feel like the lyrics are polished enough to where we could take it out live and perform it live, and if we get some harmony parts on it, some vocal harmony parts, I feel like that's when the song's pretty much in its final stages of uh, completeness. If that's the word. Completeness? Okay. All right. Let's see if you two can top that. <laughs> so, th- yeah, I, I would agree with Brian. And then another cool thing, I mean, maybe it's it's like a cool thing that, you know, maybe a song's never really finished because even in our live performances, we do play the songs a little differently, adding in different ideas and, and different parts, and that can kind of bring the show like uh, up a level and make it you know super personal to the people who are seeing there or who are seeing us play and they can be like oh man they did a really cool version of this song or added this in so i would say if i had to say when when a, a song is finished is when you can have such a good structure for it and a good foundation for it that you can experiment and play with it live so far, these are great answers, better than the typical abandoned uh, 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 answer. What have you got, Ty? I was going to say, like, there's different stages of the finish. I think there's, like, finished for live show, like, before, like, you play it live or whatever and you have it tight with a vocal melody and everything. Then there's finished, like, officially, like, recorded and released and everything. And I guess that would, that's what I would, like, classify as, like, officially, like finished when you like just finish recording it in the studio and because like when we go and we like record songs or like before we record the songs like we f- do the first stage of finish yeah we we'll make a like, demo version yeah demo yeah. version and like we get that down but then when we actually go in the studio studio to like record it it turns out slightly different than like how it was before Oh, so, like, yeah, that, that's got to be a real pain where like you think you're going to the studio just to mix the material and then you realize like you're rearranging the whole structure and starting from scratch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I have uh, two more questions. Uh, that's cool. Um, one of them is uh, kind of like you mentioned, like a uh, lyrical concepts and stuff like that or like harmonizing. Has you guys ever thought about maybe like taking the concept album approach? Because I feel like the music with your different sounds musically in itself, it's very thought provoking as well. Have you thought that maybe like you could maybe create an album to follow like a storyline or some sort of a personal sort of deeper message behind it? Yeah, definitely do. Um, it's just cool you mentioned that because the these new batch of songs that we have going on are we're kind of taking a more um, modern approach to like our storytelling and telling more of like a personal story. That's one easier to follow, and two that's kind of more relevant to the times now. Um, but yeah, I think a concept album would be really special. I think uh, it'd be a really cool, really cool like new thing that we haven't tried out yet. So yeah. stay tuned. Yeah, those are always the difficult ones, but when you make it happen, like the way Mastodon or Fear Factory or Nevermore has made like concept albums, like Sergeant Peppers. Oh, of course. That's one of the greatest ones. Uh, can't forget that one, right? <laughs> um, and finally, the final question I wanted to ask you is, uh, you know, this is going to be the first time I'm seeing Auto Live tonight. I cannot wait, and it's going to be a kick-ass time. But is there at all a similar energy to playing live as you do in your songwriting, or do you consider them two completely separate arts altogether? I would say we try to practice how we play live. Like when we're in the garage or we're at the uh, you know rehearsal studio, we're in there and we're jamming and we're playing like how we do for the show because we want our songs on the record to feel as though as if you're at like a live show. So in that way, they're similar. But then also they, they are a little bit different entities as well. For example, like I said earlier, we kind of play the songs live they're in a slightly different way so yeah that, that's what i would go with yeah like at rehearsal like i could feel like i could try more different stuff like oh let me try this does it sound cool or does it sound like shitty and if it sounds if it sounds cool i'm like oh cool i'll use that live but then if i like i'm more comfortable to try things you know like when we're rehearsing but live i'm i try things here and there but i try not to like go too far out because i don't want to like you know, like screw up or anything, but yeah, because yeah. the brain picking question I ask is, you know, when you are playing live, you are replicating the songs that uh, 
you wrote and putting it in a live yeah. setting. So is there really anything creative about playing live? Yeah, there's certain aspects, I think. Definitely, I think there's certain aspects. Like, yes, it's it's definitely like a a more like like well oiled kind of machine. Like like a we have like a, a goal to recreate these songs and and play them to the best of our ability at the time. So in a sense, like like yes, it's maybe not as creative, but at the same time, you know, um, maybe stage presence wise, we try a lot of different stuff. So in that in that sense, it can be a little creative. Do you have to practice that, like crowd interaction and stage presence? Is that really something that you can rehearse or practice, or do you just have to do that? Does that evolution of that come as you play more and more? Yeah, I feel like that's something you just kind of like learn um, just by playing more often. Uh, it's not really something you could really practice because I feel like you know communication between us humans should be like natural, you know, and especially now with like phones and shit. Like I feel like a lot of communications and everything like you know, just in like a more social setting, you know, getting to like meet someone is now kind of difficult. I feel like for everybody. So, you know, even now, like just like, you know, trying out different things and just doing it often. I feel like you get more comfortable with it. Um, you can connect more to it on a personal level. Absolutely. It's a very in the moment type thing, you know, when you're on stage in the moment, you do certain things and you have the energy and it's there. But when it's not there, like when you're rehearsing, it's kind of hard to do that. But yeah, yeah. definitely. And you, I mean, unless you put out like the puppets or like dolls in hey. front. <laughs> yeah. I, I've talked to some bands that have done that. I won't mention who. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, I want to thank all of you so much for your time, and thank you for coming to our city today. And most of all, thank you for this awesome new album, Life Is a Game. Is there just anything else with uh, Otto that you'd like to promote in terms of upcoming shows? What else we could be expecting? If you're allowed to say it this time, of course. Yeah, I mean, for sure, the yeah, the Great North American Conquest is starting here in NYC. No better place to start it off than right here. We're really excited to play tonight and kick this thing off. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys so much. Everybody, we are here with Auto Life is a Game. It is out now. Be sure to pick that up. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time. See ya. See you later.